we have arrived to St. Vincent Island in the Panhandle of Florida. <laughs> Off to a rough start. For some odd reason, boat was running like a champ at the house. We got here. Didn't want to start. It wasn't a gas issue. It looked like it was a toggle switch on and off issue. So that's the mainland over there. This is St. Vincent Island. That's our little 14 foot John boat. So today is the scouting day that you're allowed to go on the island and you're allowed to be able to scout. So we're going to be going in quite a few miles, pack our stands, pack everything up for tomorrow morning's hunt kickoff. You know, we had meant to start be on the island by eight and it's 11 30 so a little late but better late than never and the party's just getting started oh i left the whole anchor set up hello <laughs> 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 Island. We are on mile, not gonna tell you, on road, not gonna tell you either. So we're about to go in um, to our spots. We've hunted these spots year in, year out for about five years straight now, and they've always done us well. So when we get over there and set up on the way out, I'll kind of give you guys some tips on what to look for, fresh sign, and what people think fresh sign are, and it's not. So I'll kind of give you guys a little heads up on that one. So here we go. Yeah. We only have. Thanks uh, for giving the old man a break here. <laughs> All right, we ready? Yeah. Four thousand yards left of the pedal. Yeah. <sighs> All right. All right, Gypsy. Okay. Gypsy queen. Shake and bake, baby.
All right, so we just set up in one of our spots. Um, deer prints everywhere, sandbar prints everywhere, hog uh, tracks and rooting everywhere. So that's pretty good. So one of the little tricks I'm gonna show you guys that I look for um, is a lot of people get mistaken. Like right here, you see that that deer print right there. So people would say. All of these are fresh but see that gray how it still has moisture on it so if you have a deer print see how that one's white if you have a deer print that's looks like that that's a fresh deer print you can see that gray that moisture showing through the sand it hasn't dried out yet so you can see that kick up that's a fresh track so that's an old track old track so like I said you know if you have track that looks like that that's a fresh track you know all these are old so some people on the island some people on the island will be like oh my gosh I found a spot full of tracks and there is full of tracks but nothing recent it wasn't you know huntable there might be one but not a lot of activity so we saw a lot of good fresh activity Marcos is set up in a hell of a spot too where he sh where he saw a good buck there last year I got my video were set about I don't know 20 yards away from me and I am set up in front of him so I can kind of see the whole road we got hog rooting to our left and a bunch of deer tracks to our right and some sandbar so it'd be cool to get some video of some sandbar but uh just one of our tips I'll give you guys a bunch of different tips throughout the whole the whole hunt here but we're on the way back so we have a little bit of a ride to get to the main grade get back and then we have a meeting at five o'clock day one success parked our bikes we're gonna take a little walk on the beach now get back on the boat we gotta be back for the meeting but you guys know how it is it's exciting i mean look at that look how beautiful that is out there man it's gorgeous dude who ever thought that right hunting on an island where you could hear the beach in the background and get some blood on some beach sand. I'll take it. Camo and salt water. Why not? Sure. Gotta love it. All right, so we're on the mainland across from St. Vincent Island and there's like a little park that's right on the beach got two does behind me right here and as you can see i mean they're pretty they're decent size they're good deer so let's see if we can find some horns
they say it's a deer in a can. Don't know how they put it in there, but it sounds good. Alright, so this is the tree saddle. So the tree saddle, it's an alternative method from using a climber. You use uh, some sticks and then you can use a little platform to stand on like I am. Some people use them, some people don't. So now, the more slack you give yourself, right? So if I go like this and give myself more slack, the more slack you give yourself, the farther you are in the tree. You can kind of kneel like that and chill, relax, and step, step back up. Now also, the more slack you have, the more you can get around this tree to shoot behind you. shoot that way you can even work yourself around the tree this way to make that shot you can turn so there's a hundred ways now the best way to do it is you face the way you think you're going to shoot so then you can rest your gun against that tree and be able to take that shot um, pretty comfortable I sat in it this morning for like four and a half hours I'm good my knees are good kind of takes the pressure off your knees because you're leaning back on it the whole time. So, I mean, for quick setups, I recommend it. I mean, for a place like this that you can use a climber everywhere, I would say bring a climber. But in a place like the Midwest where you're picking on trees and there's more lock-ons that are better, this is better. So, just a little tip. My little cameraman here wants some Got him. 
action. All right, so quick little recap. After that shot took place, we got down from the stand, we went out, and I wanted to make double sure that I did not hit that buck. I, want, I just wanted to put my mind at ease and give that animal the respect to go look and make sure I miss. So we, I looked everywhere, 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 not a dot of blood in any direction. I can see the kickoff where he ran. Um, so I know for a fact he's alive and next year I'll be going back after him. So we came back out, uh, got to the bikes and just said, all right, let's get back and prepare for day number two. Let's keep it rolling. Day number two in the tree saddle, AKA nut hugger, AKA banana hammock. So overall, not that bad. Um, it's good. I noticed yesterday when I go to do the shot, it kind of sways a little bit. So the trick that I kind of found was put your knees on it. It kind of steadies you a little bit. But I've done a lot of things in this hunting industry. And my number one mission now is to kill something out of this thing. So I'm pretty excited. We're in the same spot as yesterday afternoon. Uh, we moved yesterday morning to this spot. Uh, it's given to us before. We had some good action yesterday. We saw a buck chasing two does. We saw another buck here. Um, so it just poured rain this morning. So we didn't come this morning. We came, uh, I think we got here, let's take one o'clock now or something. So we're here now and we're gonna ride it out. I know tomorrow they're talking about 20 mile hour winds, but I'm pretty sure we're just gonna make it happen and come tomorrow too. So fingers crossed, we just had a heavy rain. Hopefully that'll get them out of their bed and moving around. I know I saw a lot of fresh tracks on the way in. So, I mean, we're sitting in a perfect place. We got a road this way. We got two roads that go north and south. And we have a flag, kind of like it's marsh to our back with a flag pond. Then we have some scrub oaks and some palmettos. So it's perfect. We got food, we got water, we got cover. We got easy access in and out. It's exactly what you would want. You know, that's kind of why we picked this spot. There's a lot of easements for them to walk easily through all of this stuff and not really have to get in the brush and it all intersects in one intersection here. So let's see what happens.
three. It's been a bit hectic. We've had a lot of ups and downs and trials and tribulations, boat issues, wind. It's 30 mile an hour wind right now. I'm sure you guys can hear it on this thing. Just GoPro batteries dying quicker than normal. And then it rained, so it made biking a lot harder. So, definitely tough. And I've wanted this out in a lot of years, and this one hits the cake. But, that's what it is. It's hunting, and not called killing. So, we go out every morning, every evening. We actually haven't been hunting in the mornings, uh, except for the first day. Just because it's been ridiculously windy, and to cross on the boat is too dangerous. So we opted not to do that and just come in the evenings. So I'm frustrated. Cameraman is frustrated. Everybody's frustrated, but it's enjoyable. I love it. I do it for the love of the sport. And it's not always gonna go right. It's not always gonna go your way. And doesn't mean you have to stop and keep going and yes when you're frustrated you make more mistakes but gotta take a minute to save a minute and it is what it is my bike is jingling and jangling stuff's coming loose <laughs> it is what it is guys i'm having a great time smiling past the, the bad stuff and that's just what you have to do so we're back home from the trip and I just wanted to take a minute to kind of give you guys what to expect on the island. Just because I feel that some people are kind of intimidated a little bit by the word island and, and there's really not a lot of information on what exactly to expect when you get there and kind of it's fun, it's easy. As long as you, you have everything you need, it's going to be good. And I'm going to kind of go over just a little tips and things that maybe you should bring and, and kind of what to expect when you're there. So obviously the island, is, it's uh, in the Panhandle of Florida and it is not very far from the mainland. It's very close actually. It's, I don't know, 400 yards, 500 yards, right there. So definitely want a boat. I did see some guys this year with a kayak. Just so everybody knows, that wind, when it picks up, I've been hunting it for years and it rips in between the mainland and that island and it causes a lot of current. So yes, you may get a day that you can cross, but if that current is ripping, uh, we'll see you in Miami. <laughs> it's going to rip you all the way down there. So I say you bring a boat with a motor, get across. Once you get across, bring three sections of however wide your boat is of three inch PVC pipe. Reason I say three inch PVC pipe is you can roll your boat onto the beach. So if you get there on low tide, sometimes your boat, you'll beach it and your boat will be like this. So this will be the back transom of your boat and your boat's gonna be sitting like this. So all of a sudden, a lot of that boat's on the sand, a lot of that boat's in the water. Here comes that current that starts bringing that water in. So before your boat has enough water coverage to float, it actually fills the back of your boat up with water, and then you come back to a half sunk boat. So the reason you bring the PVC pipe is to roll that boat onto the beach. So now, if it's a real bad windy day, if it's a calm day, you're pretty much safe. You could just do it without the PVC pipes. PVC pipes saved our butt. I'm sorry it wasn't on the film, it was just at dark, but it saved our butt to get our, our boat off, and it saved a bigger boat, like an 18 foot, use flats boat we use that pvc pipe to get his boat off the beach and, and it works so that's just another little tip definitely bring a paddle for whatever the case is your motors don't want to start when you get pushed off the island at least you could have that paddle to kind of fight the current while you work your issue with that motor because it really does get ripping there um waders another thing i've seen a lot of people do is they'll anchor their boat out in the water and then they'll put waders on and wade to the beach it's up to you I like having it on the beach, just one less step. Um, when you beach it, also bring an anchor, a big anchor that you can put on the beach and kind of keep your boat there. Um, all right, so 
first day, it's usually Wednesday, is the time you can go on there, set up your stuff, and then they have a meeting at 5 o'clock. The guys that run the show there, outstanding. I mean, just a great group of people. Uh, I mean, the guys that run that whole island, just awesome. I mean, you could ask them anything you want. You could talk to them. Super cool people, super down to earth, um, and they want everybody to be happy and be successful. So it's really cool to, to have people on the island that are see eye to eye with us. So that Wednesday you go, you, you set up first at 8 o'clock, you're allowed on the island, you set your stuff up. 5 o'clock you come in. Now the meeting is obviously to talk, talk about what's legal, what's not legal, just all the safety hazards and all that stuff of the island. And to see who's going to get a dough tag. So every other person gets a dough tag basically is how it is. So you go there and you can get your dough tag. After that, the next morning, Thursday, Friday, Saturday are your hunting days. So you start that morning and that evening, start the next morning and that evening and so on and so forth. Um, by Sunday, everything needs to be off the island by early morning. Now you have two options. Your options is stay on the island or stay on the mainland. It is completely up to you. I, uh, I've, I've done them. I, I toodles to whoever wants to stay on the island. That's awesome. I choose to stay on the mainland just because of just comfortability being able to come take a shower a lot of the nights it rains on the island so it just and budget wise too it all depends you know what works for you and what you like best some people are just really set up to hunt and set up camp and a tent and all that stuff so you can do both simple either stay on the mainland or stay on the island that's an easy one now versus how far you need to go on the island you don't need to go far especially for whitetail there's a lot of early sign on the video. I kind of went over some tips and tricks, but what you want to know is you want to see that gray, that gray sand. If it's white deer prints, that's old sign. If it is gray, that means that that track was freshly kicked up and that moisture is still in that sand. So it shows that it's a fresh track that the moisture hasn't dried out of that track yet. So that is one thing to really look for because some people will get there and be like oh my goodness there's tracks everywhere and you're setting up on old stuff when yes you could look for stuff that's that dark gray moist color tracks that's where you want to set up is on the darker stuff because that's the fresh stuff also lights bags i always take an extra bag and it has all my trash bags for whatever deer meat or cape or whatever it is my knives i leave that on the boat just so when you're successful, you can come back out to your boat, grab your stuff. They do let you clean your animal on at there at their cleaning station. You can hang it and do all your stuff that you want to do to it, debone it, quarter it out, cape it, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, but at least all your stuff is on the boat. You're not carrying and lugging around all your whole knife set and bags and all that stuff. That's kind of like a quick rundown of, of the island. It's nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be scared of. You'll really have a great time. It's something different that honestly, we're, you know, as outdoorsmen hunters, we're blessed to be able to actually go to an island that's public, you know, I mean, that's pretty stinking cool, you know, I mean, so not too many people get to do it. It's about 600 people a year, you know, so they have three hunts. They have a white tail archery hunt, and I believe it's 250 people at that time. Um, they have a sandbar hunt, an Asian elk. I mean, come on, that's outstanding. Um, that's 200 people, I believe, on a, on a certain time. And then they have the muzzleloader hunt, which is the one I went on, um, that I go on every year. That is 250 people as well. Um, not everybody shows up, so don't get intimidated by the high number of people, you know. So that's nothing, it's hunting at its best, you know. Um, but I really hope that this video helps you understand St. Vincent Island. Um, it's something that I wish would have been out there the first time I went out to kind of see what's on the island, what exists, what, how do you hunt it, how do you do it. I mean, there were so many questions I had. And if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to just drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it for you. And um, don't be afraid. Just ask away and don't be afraid to take a leap and get on it and I'll see you at that hunt next year. It's been a great and, and fun time and it's my pleasure to be able to bring this to you. And thank you very much for taking your time out of your day to watch this. So stay extreme and see you on the next one.